As mentioned in the previous episode, Chief Tim Kikwam reached out to representatives from Governor Sheila Johnson's office and requested that she come to the area to discuss transportation issues. Chief Kikwam showed the governor all of the problems in the area and made recommendations for improvements, for which she was generally supportive. She ended up instructing the Superior State DOT to get funding for and build the requested harbors, fix the formerly nightmarish intersection right here, and provide funding for mass transportation. DOT staff also recommended reducing funneling by adding additional highways throughout the area, which Governor Johnson has agreed to support. Today, we're going to build that quality transit system and the additional connections through the area to reduce the funneling. We're also going to expand Evergreen a bit in an effort to resolve the ongoing demand for residential throughout the Bay. But before we get building, we better check in with Philip with two L's. You know, Philip with two L's and I don't agree about much, but we do agree about one thing. We love our Raycons. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever, offering 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. And with their gel tips, they are so comfortable. These are without a doubt the most comfortable earbuds I have ever put in my ears. One of my favorite features of the earbuds is that they have different sound profiles, which is really great because I have eclectic tastes. I listen to everything from Chris Stapleton to the Hamilton soundtrack to Thundercat. And of course, I listen to podcasts and the profiles make everything sound good. I also love the noise isolation and awareness modes. Isolation mode completely blocks out the sounds around you, while the awareness mode is handy when you're walking around a downtown area and want to know what's going on around you. If all of this sounds good to you, click on the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash cityplanner to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Once again, that's buyraycon.com slash cityplanner, and I'd like to give a huge shout out to Raycon for supporting today's video. Now let's jump back into our build. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building transportation infrastructure in Nicolay Bay. And I'm really excited for today's episode because we're going to be building a lot of stuff that wouldn't otherwise be possible at this stage in the city's life, in my estimation, particularly some of our new connectivity. And I really think that that is where I want to start because it's going to have a pretty profound impact on the area. So if we take a look at our traffic flow, we're currently at 85% which is pretty outstanding. So some of what we're doing right now is gonna be kind of future-proofing our community. So what I wanna do is start out with a connection between this part of the community and this part of the community to get our trash facilities connected all the way across here. So that will allow this trash collection to occur without going through either our harbor area or our interchange. This would be a true local connection, which is something that we don't have in the community right now. So we're going to start with that. I want to get to the transit service, but I do think that this is probably the most important thing, particularly because we might want to use this for transit service. You never really know. So let's start out here, turning our contours on and our local connection is going to go past this industry right here, which might seem like an odd choice, but we're, we're really limited in, in the options that we have available to us. So when your options are limited, sometimes you have to get creative. So I'm going to start out by making this brush size a little bit wider, and then we're going to right mouse click up here. And we're going to try to follow this contour line. Now, where we're following this to is the narrowest point of the highway that we can cross. So this would be the most cost effective crossing. And we're also getting closer to a point where the bridge wouldn't be quite so tall. So this is probably a pretty decent location. And then I'm just going to drag this across the highway and stretch this out. So this connection is going to come right over here. So what we're going to do is pull this across, right mouse click up here, left click here. Let's get both of them in sight. And we're gonna to need to do a little bit more work here because we wanna prioritize this through movement. So we're gonna to have to call a mulligan on this road and reconstruct it. So we're gonna start out with our industrial road. And one of the reasons that I wanna use this road is I think you're gonna really like what happens here. So as we cross this with this industrial road, check out this bridge, absolutely stunning. So we're going to choose the shortest span that we can. And then I'll hit M for move it, control H to get the heights to be the same. And let's see how this looks. <laughs> it looks crazy. So we're going to have to raise this up. And that's probably about where we need to be. So I'm going to control H to that height from either side. That's looking better. We're going to need to raise up our hill. Oh, and that was a little much. <laughs> All right, let's lower that down. Take our brush strength down to 0, .0 something. 
And now we can tap, tap, tap to get it right. Tap, tap, tap. That's pretty good. And we can use this as our height now. And now we're gonna slope this. So I'm gonna grab the slope terrain tool, turn this up, right mouse click up top, left click on the bottom, and slope this out. And now we've got a nice connection, or a nice potential connection. Make sure that this is on the ground. We're gonna turn this right back around. Now I could have removed the trees first, I didn't. It's okay, we'll deal. We'll get rid of the trees after. That wasn't quite right. Okay, so this is gonna be tricky because we need this to sweep over if we're gonna have trucks here. So there'd be a lot of blasting to make this occur. We're gonna take this and pull this in through here. And to make this work, I'm gonna back that out one. And then we're gonna have to use our free form road tool to make this happen. So now I'm gonna go into the curved road tool and try to make a connection. I'm gonna have to go back another step here. And there we go. That's looking good to me. We'll get rid of the trees there and look at that. That's what we're looking for. And I think that that's gonna work really well for us. We need to remove some of these trees from the hillside, being thoughtful uh, in, about where our trees are growing. I said that we're gonna keep that up to the build and we're absolutely going to. Now over here, we're gonna grab this height, right mouse click, left click over here. And we've built this up so we can tear it down apparently. <laughs> so we're gonna grab this here and then again, slope up to this location. So now we need to come here. So we're going to delete this. And yeah, the game's still running. That's okay. We will be just fine. I'm going to pull this over here. And then we're going to again slope this down. Then we'll use our curved road tool to come right up here. And oh, look at that. We're going to need to really call a mulligan, take this really far back. And now we can have a nice turn in there. Now for this road, we got to come in at a 90. So We'll come in maybe with a 3U90 and then angle this over. Let's clean it up. And now I want to really do some cleanup with our slopes. So we're going to come through and take a look at our slopes. You can see there's a bump there. Easy to clean. Easy peasy. There we go. That's looking good. And through here, same deal. Not much work is needed to make that look absolutely fantastic. So I think that this is going to be a very, very, very valuable route, and I'm excited to see what happens. Let's uh, take a look and see. You already see a whole bunch of traffic using this. So that is what I was hoping for. Now, interestingly, because we restricted freight movements here in the last episode, you can see that this is all private vehicles. So here we're seeing freight and private vehicles. Most of these private vehicles, though, I mean, it seems like it's mostly freight. Some private vehicles getting into this community here, and most of them are coming through right here. That is interesting. Very, very good. Liking that. And now I want to look at our traffic to see if it's said anything. 82, all within the margins. We're still looking really good. Looking really good. But I don't want to stop there. Well, the state's in here. They're going to do a little bit more, and they want a connection across here. So I think it looks as though we should continue out this way and have a connection to the outside world. We may get there eventually, but I think the more valuable connection right now is a local connection that parallels the highway so that instead of hopping on the highway and mixing with all of that regional traffic, you'd be able to take a truly local route to get over here and around the community. So that's what we're going to build right now. And the way that we're going to do that is actually to call a little bit of a mulligan right here. Let's turn our contours on. I'm going to back this out and I think that we're too close. We're gonna have a roundabout here that's going to be telling about where we should be going in the future. We're gonna end this right about here. And then this will we'll make sure that this fits perfectly within this area, the roundabout. Back this out a little ways. And then let's go ahead and make that connection. So this is something that the state is actively lobbying for. So we're gonna let them do what they need to do. This is undeveloped land, so with their deep pockets and their real estate office, they're able to make this happen. That's the thing about the state government. They are so large that they have specific offices dedicated to procuring this real estate, and they would give fair value to whomever owns this, and uh, it would be a fairly smooth process, even if it takes a little while, because the state has the resources to do this sort of thing. A local government, not so much, and that's one of the reasons why it's valuable to have the state getting involved. So we're gonna come through here and again, mirror that 44 radius on the roundabout, place that right here. 
coming in at 90s looking good and we'll improve these oh yeah i like that and now we're gonna do the same thing over here and i want to eliminate the trees through here we did decorate our other roundabout we're gonna we may do that with this one and the previous one closer towards the end of the episode but right now we need to figure out our path now again the purpose of this is redundancy and i think from a public safety perspective that would be valuable give people another option to get out of here create another option open up some land for development all sorts of reasons why this connection would be valuable now it's not feasible without the state getting involved because who's going to pay for it otherwise who has the rationale to do this it's certainly not going to be a private developer unless they're going to develop a whole neighborhood up here but really this is going to be really challenging to develop this land without a road up there that road would cost so much so the state looks at this and they think they've got a few different rationales that they could certainly pursue one of them being the development potential added tax revenue economic development uh, a, a whole number of reasons why the state might have interest in this so we're going to start right here send this up we'll go up maybe five units and then we're going to turn and there's not really an obvious way to get up here i think there might just be a less bad way the contours seem a little less extreme over here so what we're going to do is angle this over here and we need to get right here this is fairly flat so we're going to use our slope terrain tool right mouse click up here left down here and slope our way up and there's some curving and it's a challenge and there's some carving but i think that it is a good connection you might be wondering why there's such a large turn in this and i'm just thinking about the future what types of vehicles are going to to, to use this and I'm thinking it's going to be a lot of industrial type traffic through here that uh, absolutely needs that to be a good connection with nice, gentle slopes and uh, larger turn radii. So now when I look at this side, I see a couple of things. So we could try to come through here. That would be a an interesting looking connection. But I think the more feasible and logical connection is actually just on the outside here. And we're going to make this connection. It's a nice gentle path to get up here. We can cut through the terrain and the slopes, respecting our topography. There we go, nice and gentle. Let's get rid of these trees again. And the nice thing is I think we're doing double duty right now. This is a fire break and it is a valuable roadway connection. So I wanna look at our resources now to make sure that we're not going through and disrupting our natural resources. And this seems to be the narrowest location. So here's what we're gonna do. Right here, we're gonna make our connection. And then we'll run this over along the side and up here. And then this will be a nice sweeping turn. This would probably be a motorcyclist dream. Just a, a really interesting drive. Anyone who would, who would go for a drive, I could see this being something that would draw people in from all over the place. Now, I'm gonna sweep this road over. We're gonna call a little bit of a mulligan on this path because I'm gonna round about this location. I think that this is eventually going to have a lot of traffic and the road, the, the game just doesn't do well with highway connections uh, that are signalized, which is what I think would likely happen here, or even just a, a stop control junction. It does really well with roundabouts, so we'll do that instead. So quite the extensive mulligan, quite the expensive mulligan, but I think it's absolutely a benefit to this area. There we go. Now. We go into our roundabout tool again, 44, pop that bad boy in, put this back here. We'll spread this out. And then we're gonna upgrade this to be a highway segment. It's really strange to me having that non-highway segment. And we're gonna extend the highway up just a little bit here. We're not gonna go all the way, but I do think it's really weird to think of a dirt road going into a roundabout. And I think that I need to do a better job of just thinking about those sorts of things. When is it just too weird? When is it <laughs> totally unusual and abnormal? And now I think this is pretty good. We do need to set this up, but we need to set up the other one as well. So we'll pop through here, turn that into a roundabout. And look at that. We've already got some of our first folks using this road. So it's funny. I clicked on it and I saw no traffic and I felt like I had to click a few more times. I don't know why these couple of folks are using this, but they are. <laughs> Maybe we will just formalize this. We'll make this that highway connection that we had talked about. 
Okay, so we've upgraded that to a highway segment. We'll convert this to be a roundabout. And then again, we'll pull this back through here and use our node controller control N to make this a better angle. Feeling good about that. I also want to come through and make sure that you're not entering the approach of the roundabout on a slope. I'm just lowering that another node. I could go even further, but I think it's probably good enough. Not bad. I mean, actually, let's actually that's even better. I think we got to do that. Now I want to go through and again, check our slopes. I've done the work and I think it's good. There's always better. There's always better like this. I think we can get rid of those nines and have a nice maybe seven all the way through. It's pretty darn good. And over here, I don't think there's much work to do at all. Oh, there's a 13. So there is. And I bet you if I go even further. Oh, that is terrible. And I can't control Z that. So we're going to have to just make this look a little bit better. I hate when that happens. It's my own fault, but it doesn't mean that I don't like it. <laughs> and truthfully, I wonder if there's just some merit in, in, in building a viaduct or something. And that might be a good solution here. I, I actually, I think that's not bad. That makes some sense to me. And through here, we've done blasting to make this look good. And I like this. I think it is reasonable and more realistic. Still think there's a little bit more. It's always just a little bit more that you could do. <laughs> so you've got to, you got to have restraint, which I don't always have. I think you could make a case that we should put in some fencing around here. And I think I'm going to make that case myself. So let's go through. We're going to grab just our real basic nature reserve fence and we're going to go into our unified UI into our create parallel mode and right here through here. I'm going to uh, plus plus to give a little bit more space and then I'm going to tab this over hit enter again and now we get it on both sides. There's some weird node controller stuff going on here and I just want to delete some of these. You can see like why is that like that? I don't know right here too. I think that's a bug that's been in the most recent version of node controller it happens okay and that's looking much 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 better in my opinion and i like it now i could go through and do all of the intersection marking and now i'm going to come through here and turn off all the markings because there's a marking there it bugs me that there's sidewalks over here too but i'm going to not let perfect be the enemy of good and we're just going to accept this a little bit of imperfection here we could probably come over here and do the exact same thing with our markings and i'm going to apply a, a filler to all of these as well so we'll hold down alt select our filler area and i kind of like the idea of grass we'll lower that down to the ground and i'm going to copy this and then paste it and do the same thing here and I suppose I could make a template too, but I like this just as good. And yeah, that's looking good. Now we'll come back over to this one and do this same thing. Oh, feeling good about that. Now let's do a bit of landscaping through here. I'm going to try to find the center of this and put some flowers through here. Not Okay, this is pretty basic. It's just a, a tree with some grasses in the center. But to me, that feels pretty normal as far as what I would see at a roundabout. Got some nice decorative flowers along the outside, something low maintenance in the center, uh, or closer to the center, and then a tree in the middle. Maybe you have a couple of trees. Okay, there we go. So it's, it's, it's pretty nice. I'm, I'm okay with it. So now I don't want to spend a ton of time on this right now, but I do want my other roundabouts to look nice. So I'm just going to copy this. So I've gone through and I've selected my marquee selection. Trees only. We're going to copy this. And now I have this and we can just come right here and drop that in there. And one more right over here. The fastest and laziest way of decorating a roundabout. But look at that. A ton better than before. So I'm going to take it as a win and like it. So there we go. Now I am noticing in these areas... We went a little light on the landscaping, which is a regret. We're going to add some more through here. So there we go. Feeling good about that. We are protecting our views. We will protect this one right here. There we go. Feeling good about that. Feeling really good about that. Okay, so I've been thinking about this, and though I want to get to transit, I think that it's important that we expand Evergreen before we do that, because if we don't, we're going to end up in a position 
where Evergreen is expanding after we built Transit and the Transit won't extend all the way into Evergreen. That said, we're going to build an inner city transit terminal. So let's do that first, our inner city hub, and we won't build any routes besides that. So I think that right here is one of our better locations for this facility. We've already got other city services there. We've got direct connections uh, in all directions. We don't have to use the highway to get anywhere. So I think that this is a very good location. So we're going to select this right here. We're going to level it out and then let's pop on through here. And we have the inner city bus station. It's pretty well right there. And this doesn't fit at all. <laughs> so I think our decision is made for us, except that we've got to level this out even more. There we go. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. I do want to slide this over a little bit, add a little bit of separation between these uses. And now we have our inner city bus station. This is a pretty nice location for it, if I don't say so myself. We should decorate around here a bit. And the other concern that I would have is that the drivers would likely need a place to park. You see that there's some parking right here. What we're going to do is send up a road back here. And I'm noticing something interesting. I can make this road straight so long as I have it elevated too high. So now I can lower it down to that building and it's completely happy. So that's a nice connection there. And what we can do now is have a small parking lot back here. There we go. I think that's looking really good. And this facility would be very valuable for this entire area. And I'm going to also add in some more landscaping. We'll take this down a touch. There we go. There we go. It's going to make this have more of a, a feeling of a place, a sense of place. Because right now, I mean, it's easy to just build a place like this and just leave it and walk away. I think where your build becomes special is when you take that place and you do something with it. So here we go. Add in some flowers here. Maybe even a fence back here. Now this is unfortunate. There are some bushes in the back here. I'm going to use Bob to get rid of those. Hmm. So I can't get this to go away. So I'm going to see if I can just move this up. So using move it, I'm going to just slide this up. We'll see how close I can get this. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. All right. So is this actually getting utilization? No. <laughs> Maybe some point soon. Let's start thinking about Evergreen a little bit. And we've had a fire. It looks like things are okay. And now we are level two park too. So that's nice. Feeling good about that. That improves the land values. What I want to do now is really, uh, we're going to build a fairly significant addition to this community. But I want to be thoughtful about it. We're going to just remove all the trees up front. And we're going to just expand right about to here. So as we do that, I want to think about where the town of Evergreen ends. So generally towns are square or rectangular. We'll just say the reason why this line ends right there is that's the end of the town right there. And the reason why this one isn't, oh, we'll take it all the way out. We'll show where the water boundary is as well. There we go. So that is why our development ends there. Now we're going to have a fairly simple development pattern. We're just going to extend this existing pattern out. So I'm going to turn all of our snap twos on and we're just going to run with it. Now from here, we've got our hotel that is blocking our ability to connect through. And that is why it's really important to reserve right away. Cause when you don't do that, you end up in situations like this where you're just kind of stuck. So we're, not going to have connectivity through there and it's going to be just fine, I think. <laughs> and now for this, again, we're going to go and use our 11 units. And look at this meter down here. It's just very high demand. So I think that you could get impatient, take this, grab your water pipes, put them underneath the road, right where they belong. And then this zone, this whole bad boy for residential, call it a day, start responding to 
things as they come up, start adding in, you know, different uh, services as they're requested. But we're going to be more intentional and we're going to think about all of the different things that this community would need. And one of the things it's going to need are roadway names. So if you got to this point in the video, drop me a road naming idea, but I want you to include the word banana so I can filter and find just people who are watching through this point in the video. So drop a comment with the word banana and your road naming suggestion. I'm going to search through and select some and we'll name all these streets through here in the next one. All right. So let's think about all of our city services. We've got police, we've got fire, and we've got transit over here. We don't have a transit. We actually, it's funny. We don't have a transit a bus barn yet so we don't actually have the ability to do anything ourselves and i don't want to put that that far over here we're really kind of locked into these three roads as our only way out so we've got to be a little mindful of that but we don't have health care or death care anywhere in this community we also don't have any sort of elder care or child care and i think that that's something we need to worry about we're going to spend a lot of money so i'm going to speed this up just a little bit and where i want to start is with our elder care and we're going to give the elders a nice view. It's an unfortunate situation. We're going to place them right here. Initially, we were going to extend factories up here, but I think that we are where we where we need to be with our factory situation. So we're going to build our, our, our senior or elder care right here. So if we look, that's going to go off a little bit into the water. We're going to flatten this out. And now we won't have those concerns. Looks like we have an issue here. We'll just reset that for the time being. And what we're gonna do now is place this right here. Now, next to this, I really want to place a healthcare facility, but we don't have any money. So that's gonna be something that we're not doing. <laughs> so let's get rid of this and we can at least take care of our sand issue. And the other thing that we can do since we're back here is think a little bit about paths. So I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. And we've got this real gem, this real gem here of this view. Now I know that there's some folks who would love to see that bridge change. We're gonna get to that when we have some money. <laughs> this is clearly not that time. <laughs> we have no money. But what I wanna do is run this along the coast. And then using the grid, we'll get it over here as well. Road guidelines for our final connection. And again, this is evergreen, so let's really drive that home with some of our landscaping choices. And I'm going to be going through and removing some of these vanilla trees and replacing them with the new vanilla trees. But <laughs> for the time being, we're going to live with them as they are. And yeah, I like I like the way that this looks. So I think ideally, rather than do using landscaping to, to fence this path in, I would use a fence. However, the fence and this path are going to have conflicts. So rather than fighting between the two of these, I'll just add the landscaping and look at the sky again. And now we are in a good place. Let's level this out a bit. So let's use our parallel tool and see if I can use it on this path. There we go. I was able to do it by using our lovely create parallel mode. All right, we've got a little bit of money now and I really care about this because we need a healthcare facility and we need death care. I think for death care, I'm going to just take out a loan. I hate taking out loans, but sometimes you've just got to do it. We're going to take out a decent size loan, 60 grand, so that we can build some parks as well. And we're going to build our death care facility over here. I know it's morbid. I know. But I think that we need a nice central location for this. And this is a very centralized location. So I, I, I'd like to tell the elders, it's not about you being old. It's not about where you live. It's just a good location for it. And I see this and I'm going to change this up as well. So by default, it's like this. Those are really long crosswalks. When you hit the make end straight, you make the sidewalks the short as short a span as they can be. This is a very uncomfortable intersection to progress through, but I would rather it's uncomfortable for cars 
than for pedestrians, if that makes any sense. So now we have got elder care, we've got health care, we've got death care, we need child care, and we need it pronto. This will be the first child care facility in the entire county as well, or child health center. We're going to place that near our little downtown area, right on the corner here of what is a very important part of the community, and that will provide access to most everyone in the, in the city. That's pretty good. And now I want to think about all the parks that we'd have in this area. So obviously, if we're going to build a park, we've got one important park that we must add, that you must add every single time. We're going to add it right in the center. That's a dog park covering this entire development. And look at that. Blankets, basically everything right in the center. Love it. Love that so much. Now we're going to place a few more parks through here. So we're going to place a large playground first. And we'll actually, why don't we make this a little parks complex in the center of this neighborhood? Yeah, that's nice. That's nice there. And then we'll add a nice large park with trees. Look, this is the biggest one. And I want to center that right in the center of this water. So we'll place that right here. Use move it to, to perfectly center that one. And now we are on to our small parks. So I think we'll place a small park maybe or two. It's the small playground that I'm looking for right here. So there are small playgrounds everywhere. Within where I live, I could walk to, let me think, six small playgrounds. Uh, each of them would be about four blocks away. So I think that we need to really think about that. In reality, these playgrounds would be all different sizes. One of them near me is very, very large. One of them is really, really small, as small as it could be. And then some of the other ones are just moderate size. When you live in a big neighborhood, you need lots of playground equipment for kids. So we're gonna sprinkle these throughout and really make sure that our kids have the opportunity to go to a nice playground if they want to. And we've got one over here too, so we're already filled in there. I did miss something over here now that I'm looking. I meant to have some trees acting as a bit of a buffer in between this factory and the kids. So while I'm thinking of it, we'll do that. And while I'm seeing all of this sand, we'll get rid of that too. <laughs> okay, feeling much better. All right, now through here, I want to think about the other things. First of all, I don't know that we need any more schools. We're going to take a look. That's likely uh, a future problem. We're doing good with our education, our high school. We could, we're doing fine there. We are going to just add in some neighborhood serving commercial type uses through here. And we need some paths. We've got paths through this neighborhood. So we should extend those through. And what we'll do with our commercial is pull this around here. I'm going to pause this for a minute because we don't have water pipes. So around this little area, the, this will be a commercial area with some parks in the center. And then I would like to have just a couple of other locations with some small scale commercial. Think of an ice cream shop that you might have in your neighborhood, a coffee shop, uh, a place to, to just get your hair done. Nothing, nothing big. It's the small things that make living in a place really special where people know your name and they're happy to see you. That's the sort of thing that I want to plan for here. So just a couple of spots, nothing really major. So through here, we're gonna just start to spam our residential. I'm gonna add a path through here. And now we should be primed to grow. So we're gonna let it go now and we have to extend what we were doing before along the railroad tracks. So while this is all filling in, we're gonna do that. And now we're going to add in some of our residential zoning along here. We're doing three buys every other or with one unit gap in between to kind of simulate that they have a larger lot as a way to compensate for what would be a, a fairly uncomfortable living arrangement, living that close to the train track, the vibrations that you'd feel, the noise that you'd feel. I know all these things because I used to live right by one uh, way back in the day when I lived in uh, central Wisconsin. I lived so close to the train track that uh, if it would have derailed, it probably would have uh, been a pretty bad situation. Uh, that said, I did enjoy watching the trains go by. It was something that I used to do at my bedroom window. 
And I took a, a great deal of joy in that. So now we've got this area filling in and it's interesting. Our commercial demand is what's screaming out to me saying, please fulfill this. The other thing I'm thinking of is we might want to add a cemetery. So Evergreen doesn't have a proper cemetery. We have a crematorium, but in historic cities, you might have expected to see this. And we are going to say that Evergreen is a bit more historic than that. The nice thing is this gives us another opportunity to reinforce why this is called Evergreen. Evergreens. <laughs> there we go. Now through here, I think that we're going to add just a couple more in. A couple more trees behind here. Very good. I'm going to let this go for just one minute to see this fill in. And then we'll get to working on our bus. And our little community is really thriving. Look at that. We have over 6,000 people living here now. And if that isn't a rationale for adding bus service, I don't know what is. Now, truthfully, I think that a community of this size would be better served by a shared ride taxi. A shared ride taxi being an on-demand service that you would call point to point. So it might pick you up at your house and drop you off at the store, wherever you want to go. And then along the way, if someone else calls for a ride, Maybe they get picked up too on the same in the same taxi. You can't turn it down because it's public transit. So that is a shared ride taxi, and I could see that making a ton of sense here. That said, that's really difficult to simulate here, but we do have our mini buses thanks to B Squigglehausen. So I think we might give those a shot. The the real struggle is our routes are going to be really long, and they're going to throw a ton of transit at it, and there are it's very likely that we are going to see utilization that is unusually high <laughs> for, for what the route is. That said, that is one of the oddities of the game and one that I kind of like. So. so here we've got a bus depot and we've got our biofuel bus depot. Our bus depot provides more flexibility. I used to like the biofuel buses, but now that we have all of these different bus options available to us, I've got no more love for the biofuel buses. <laughs> so now we're going to grab these. I have snapping on. I just want to move this. Oh, un, I just want to move this over. Interestingly, it's snapping in the wrong spot for me. So I'm going to get rid of snapping, hold down alt so I can at least, it's going to drive me crazy. There. Now it's lining up nicely right in front of here. Now, the reason I care about this so much is I do want to add in a parking facility again for the bus operators. So we're gonna go through here, add in our parking. I had to flatten this, control H to here to get these to line up. Now I'm gonna go through and again, we're gonna add a little bit of landscaping. And I think we've got a power line here that's actually causing some conflicts. So I'm going to get rid of that and then we'll finish up our landscaping and a bit of fencing. There we go. And now we have our bus facility, our bus barn right here right on the coast, little parking lot next to it. And now we have everything we need to get some routes running. Oh, and all of these places abandoned. I think we we have the population to support these existing now. So I'm gonna reset these. And interestingly, it looks like our offices are totally fine. Yeah, they're operating just fine. Very interesting. Now let's start thinking about our bus routes. Let's start our lines here at our inner city bus facility. We'll run our first route to Gouillard Shores. We'll start out, we'll send our route right through here. Then we'll stop near the high school, not necessarily right inside. That would be a, well, actually, can we do it? Can we get away with it? I think we might be able to. Yeah, it's fine. It'll, par it'll drive through the parking lot. Not the most realistic thing in the world, but we'll, it, we'll deal with that. And then I want to do a full loop around the city. So the problem with the loop is that it won't be bi-directional. 
So we'll stop once here, and then we're gonna go every two blocks or so. Okay, line one is down, and this is far from a perfect bus route. Again, I'm thinking of this more as shared ride taxi service, and I'd really love for this to be able to blanket all of these folks with service. But what we've done here is at least make a loop that would give people the ability to walk in, in any direction and be within a block or two of transit. This probably is not the most frequent service, but it, but it would certainly do the trick and would be more than people would expect here. Now, the other route that is more obvious is gonna be Evergreen. So let's go ahead and we'll create a new route to Evergreen. We're gonna stay away from this route, which means that we unfortunately are going to miss this factory here. Now I have a sneaking suspicion that there's more jobs here anyway. So we will loop back around here. And actually we're not going to. If I come down here, it does a whole bunch of crazy looping. So we'll have a stop here. Actually, we'll, we'll put it right in front of the bus facility, which I'm sure that they would, they would gear for. Now looking at this, again, I think we're gonna do a circulator loop, but as long as we stay along the outside, everyone will be a couple blocks away, so it's not that big of a deal here. It's a really long and narrow community, so it kind of works in our favor from a transit standpoint. And I'm seeing something that is immediately concerning to me, and that is our water, our, our wastewater is not being filled, uh, not being fulfilled. I'm pausing this as a result because we already have that facility built. There's no reason why we should let our Sims die because we, they don't have wastewater treatment when we know that we've already got the plant built. It's just not turned on. So we will fix that in just a moment. We're almost done with this route. There we go. So over here, we've got this plant. We're going to turn it on. That makes me wonder, where are we at with everything else? Let's click into here and take a look. Looks like sewage and garbage is another problem. So... I noticed as we were building the bus route over Couliard Shores that this is full and our incineration plants in kind of a rough spot too. So we're going to need to take care of that. I think the way that we will is we'll add another incineration plant over here. Uh, honestly, what I always imagined doing over here was building a waste processing complex, but we just don't have any money for that right now. So we are going to need to do the next best thing, which is burn our garbage. So we're going to do that instead. Okay. And with that, that should take our garbage status and improve it. Our water availability is also poor. So within the new section of Couliard Shores, what we're going to do is add in a water tower. And I want to look at this at night to see how crazy it's going to look. Cause that's something that always ends up being a thing. Yeah, it's just, it's really bright. At least we're in the middle of a commercial district, which makes it a bit more palatable. Um, otherwise, that's, I, I've never gone into Bob to see if I could get rid of those lights. You can. So that might be the other way of dealing with it. We'll do that. Really, the lights on the top are all that matter for planes, I think. <laughs> so I don't know why we need to have crazy floodlights at the bottom illuminating the entire neighborhood. Just because we have a water tower, that doesn't make any sense to me. So the park's as good a spot as any to put that, so we'll add that right there. And now we can get back to our bus routes. So we've got this loop around here, and there's one more that I want to do that I think maybe saying that I want to do it is maybe a stretch. I think that we have to do, and that is a really circuitous looping route going through areas of lower densities. So we're going to take this. And I'm going to send this up the back way, I think. So this will be the route that we use. We'll add a stop right here. It's, oh, look at that colossal city. And what do we get with this? Nuclear power, floating cafe, cargo hub. That could have been useful, maybe still will be. Uh, the helicopter depot, ocean, thermal energy. We're not going to use that. And the helicopter stop. I don't know. We'll see. So not all that exciting. We, we did get lots of money for that. So maybe we can repay our loans. So back to this. We're going to add a stop right here. Again, more jobs. Another stop right here at our factory. We'll have one stop in town, but I don't want to do much more than that. We're going to do something that I think is pretty unreasonable. So I'll sometimes watch folks uh, make cities and, and still they'll have an industry like this and they're running buses up and down these roads. I think it's ridiculous. And I've done this myself. 
and then you think about what you've actually done. You've run a bus down a dirt road for lumberjacks. <laughs> How many times do you think a lumberjack has ever taken a bus to work? I'm going to say never, but we're going to do it anyway. So through here, what we're going to do is just make a loop through here. And I'm thinking of this more again as shared ride taxi. Very valuable for elderly folks, for disabled people. Uh, invaluable to have this kind of access. And it's excellent what a community can offer that. It's just really expensive, which is one of the shortcomings of it. Now, there's going to be a consequence of this. I don't know how many buses it's going to throw at this, but I'm going to guess it's going to be around 300. Because <laughs> that's what the game does. <laughs> so we're going to have to see. There we go. Now let's not forget to make this pedestrian connection. There we go. Oh, and they're criminals. They're criminals. And are holding... Yeah, Lots of cars in use, but the holding cells. All right, I think we'll need to add one more small. This is reactionary. This isn't really planning. This is responding. But we're going to add in right here. We'll add in a police department and we'll add a path back here. Use a little bit of eminent domain in that home and that will be helpful. Hopefully getting our crime problem under control, hopefully better than our fire problem. So there we go. And I think we're looking pretty good right now. Let's take a look at our bus routes to see how they're doing, because I am curious. 71 people a week using the bus route. Uh, our first route is probably as good as it's going to be. for the Wow. This stop in front of the Colossal Lines Harbor is 178 people waiting. 149 near downtown Culliard Shores. So as much as I want to use minibuses, <laughs> the game is basically telling me, no, you can't do that. Reasonably, in a million years, I wouldn't expect to see a super bendy bus going through a town of this size. But I also wouldn't expect to see 13 buses thrown at this thing when, you know, maybe three doing a loop, you know, maybe having every half hourly service during the day. Very expensive. That said, we've got a lot of buses coming through here. I'm going to speed this up and see if we start to see some of these queues clearing or if they just get worse. And it looks like they're starting to clear, but as we clear this one, we build another one behind it. So I'm not sure if we got another one right here at the Colossal Lines in the opposite direction. So we've got a few problem spots. This is up to 300 now. So we're getting lots of, uh, lots of tourists. I want to keep a normal bus, so I'm going to crank this to 175, which I think will give us the capacity we need to be able to resolve these issues, but I don't like it. I wish that we could go with a smaller bus. We'll look at these other routes. Maybe the Couliard Shores Town of Couliard line, we could do something. Over here, this is the Evergreen line, and if we look, for the most part, this is being handled. We've got one stop over here. This is near our park that is a little bit dicey, but generally, generally I think we're doing okay. I am going to increase this just a bit. Maybe we'll go 130 here just to increase the number of buses that we have by a few. I wish rather than having the percentages, uh, we could just select the number of vehicles to throw at the route. Uh, you know, if I go 130 versus 132, like how are you funding that extra person? Because honestly, the bus driver is the most expensive part, not the vehicle. So you can't fund a half a bus driver or a quarter bus driver. I guess you could do a part timer. But yeah, that's just it's a it's a kind of a funny thing to me. 150 here. We've got the same problem. I'm going to again crank this. We're going to go 175 again. and We'll see what that does for us. And then I want to look at our last route. And again, a whole bunch of people right at the station. 24 buses being thrown at this and we still have a couple of stops in really rural areas <laughs> with a whole bunch of passengers. This one we're not going to touch though. I think it'll be fine that it initially you got to just let the buses they have to they have to get out there and have to unbunch and we have to wait and be patient, which is really hard to do. Uh it's also hard to see buses going on these rural roads, but we're seeing that. So, there we go. Now I'm curious did that do anything to our traffic flow? 72%. That's terrible. And I'm not sure if that is our buses doing that or all the people moving in. We still got that. I'm not 
I'm going to try my best not to overreact. Uh, if this continues to be a problem, we will target some traffic improvements and uh, improve things along the way. We are still growing, but we are almost filled in, so it's probably just the traffic problem, and we've got a couple of spots that are a little dicey that we might need to, to, to work on. All that said, I think that we're moving in a pretty good spot, and we have one thing that we have to do. Take a look at this house. I really admire that Jacaranda coming through the center and have a brief city tour. taking a look at our newly expanded city you can see that evergreen has really grown and it's become its own place it's interesting though it's just following the railroad track but it's so big in comparison to everything that we built before in fact i am curious in terms of our population what are we looking at here 3784 so we're really looking at more than half of our population in the town of evergreen and it shows you the power of grids the reason why cities... Oh, power problems. That's no good. We're not going to solve that right now. So we'll just increase our budget here. Hopefully that's enough to get us... There we go. We're okay. Let's pay our loan. That's going to help us out on our budget front. On grids, it's just easy to continue expanding. It's logical. It's orderly. And it's not difficult to plan for. So that's why it happens. Uh, that said, I think we're going to leave it here. And I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. I think we've got some really interesting work to do here. And I like the progress that we're making and I hope that you do too. Take care. Bye-bye.